All right, Mike Heck here at American Top Team with Austin Vanderford. Good to see you, man. How are you? I'm doing good, man. I just got back from Alaska, so back in, getting ready for uh, probably like January, get ready for a fight. Alaska? What was that like? Uh, so that's where I'm from originally, um, but it was awesome. Went and did, uh, we went moose hunting and, and uh, did some halibut fishing and, and my whole family's there still, so I got to visit them and good time. It's always good to go back home, go back to the roots and, and do those things, kind of take your mind out of the fight game for a little while and just relax a little bit, right? Yeah, for sure, especially I'm recovering from a little injury too, so uh, it was a good place to just go back and, and uh, put my mind elsewhere, but also still like work out just kind of on my own and, and do stuff like that. So it was a good mental reset. How is the arm right now? We saw it on the broadcast, so uh, just curious to see where it's at. You're, you're talking January, so you must be moving along the right way. Yeah, yeah, doing good. Um, I've actually, I get out of this in a week. Um, I'm sweaty now, I just got done training. So uh, yeah, getting back into it. Um, I'm really only limited on just like my grappling right now. and not putting like a ton of pressure on it, but, uh, but it's healing really well. Uh, the doctors are super happy, got full range of motion and stuff. So it'll just be getting a little bit of strength back into it and which will be a pretty quick process too. And it appears in January, you're gonna be fighting for, a, for the Bellator middleweight title, world title fight in 2021. When you got into the sport and when you first signed with Bellator, did you think, was 2021 kind of on your radar to get that first title fight? Or did you think it would take a little bit longer? Man, yes and no. Uh, you know, I got self-belief and, and whatnot, but you know, in this sport, a lot of it comes down to the right cards being played and, and some luck too. And thankfully I had a little bit of luck on my side and uh, you know, and just moved in the right direction. Um, you know, of course, when it was time to go in and put in work, I, I got the job done each time. And uh, yeah, I mean, I kind of thought going into, I was like 2021 is probably about right. So, you know, it's all playing out right. And Gegard Mousasi just defended his title against John Salter. He's like fine wine, just finds a way to get better and better. He's, it, when you watch his interviews pre-fight, it's not, it, he doesn't, I'm not gonna say he doesn't care, but he, he just, he doesn't take himself too seriously. He just kind of glides right through it. And, and then once the cage door locks, he's just a different guy. What did you think of Gegard's performance against John Salter, who I feel is a pretty, a, a, a pretty underrated guy in that division? Yeah, uh, man, I mean, it went, it went pretty much how I thought. Uh, I thought Salter would be able to get a couple takedowns in which he did. Um, but you know, there's part of Salter's game that I feel like has a little bit of holes and, and uh, it, no, like all the respect to Salter and stuff, but just for an opponent like Gegard to be able to capitalize on. Um, you know, Gegard, Gegard's a guy on the opposite end who really doesn't have holes. And so you really, he's a tough puzzle to, to figure out, but um, you know, he looked good and, and it's an opponent I'm so excited about. If I was gonna be brutally honest about it all, uh, gay guards who I wanted to win and that's who I wanted to fight and uh, you know just for my own legacy and and I feel like going out and beating him and, and getting the belt like there is no denying like where I belong and where I'm at so that that's what I want. When you first became a professional fighter, I'm sure Gegar was a guy you watched. I think all of us watched Gegar. We were, we were fans of Gegar. Did you see yourself fighting him? We were like, one day, me and Gegar are gonna fight each other. It's so funny, because there's so many opponents that I look at and uh, from just being a fan and watching, and I was always like, man, I'll probably end up fighting that guy one day. And uh, no, Gegard was not one of them. I didn't, I, I never watched him thinking like, yeah, I'll probably fight Gegar. For one, I was surprised when he went to Bellator and, uh, and then for two, I was kind of thinking he was going to move up to, to 205. And I think maybe at, like when I first got into Bellator, I, uh, I was fighting at 170. Or I, I, I guess I was moving on my way back or on my way up to 185, excuse me. But uh, you know, yeah, just one of those guys I never really thought I would fight. So it's cool. It's pretty wild, this sport, isn't it? <laughs> Dude, it's like, yeah, it's so unpredictable, so crazy, so, but that's what makes it fun. So January seems to be the timetable. Is that what the promotion's kind of telling? I know nothing's been signed yet or anything like that, but is that kind of what the promotion's thinking as well, having this fight in January? Yeah, yeah, everything I've been told uh, January, and of course they want to make sure that I'm ready to go and, and uh, out full strength, and, and uh, January is going to be perfect for me, and, and uh, you know, I'm excited to go in. It, I would like it to be earlier, honestly, the fight, because uh, you know, it, it. I think my last one was May, so I always want to fight and stay active. But unfortunately, things out of our control happens and whatnot, and so 
Uh, this sport is about adapting and, and uh, figuring out ways to, to keep moving forward and stuff, and so that's what I'm doing. And I, I do want to ask you about Paige because you know, I saw you, we, we didn't get a chance to do an interview in a, like a professional setting, but you and I chatted a little bit in Tampa. Uh, she was on the wrong end of a decision to Rachel Ostevich, close fight. She wasn't very happy. Yeah. She let out a, you know, she's been very honest about how she felt after the fact, but she's hungry and she wants to get back after it. How would you sort of gauge her mentality right now in terms of getting back into the ring or whatever her next move is going to be right now? Listen, I've said over and over again how tough she is. And I'm not even just talking about physically, like, mentally because she's uh she suffered some losses and and she's been been put into some positions where i feel like a lot of people would fold and and would quit because she's got such a spotlight on her and you know and some of it is uh like self self-made that you know she does such a good job at promoting herself and and uh, making herself a big name and so she puts a lot of that on her and she she owns up to, to everything, to all of her losses, and, and uh, you know, she just wants to continue to get better and move forward. So she'll be in here on Monday, and, and uh, you know, we'll get ready and game plan for the next one. But she's hungry and ready to get back after it. So you think she'll be back in BKFC, you think we'll do that again, or not really uh, sure at this point? Yeah, she's got one more fight on her contract, but uh, she's definitely going to start training here at ATT, and, and uh, you know, because the, the door's wide open, there's a lot of big players again uh, requesting her service and having her come in and fight, and, uh, you know, rightfully so, because she's going to put eyes on whatever promotion she she fights for, or, you know, if she resigns with BKFC, whatever, but... Uh, you know we're we're gonna get prepared for for whatever and and uh, that BKFC shit is such a wild fight. It's like <laughs> you might as well just come in here and train MMA anyways, because straight boxing is like you gotta kind of throw that out the window somewhat and and all that. But hey, she uh, she went into to bare knuckle and went completely out of her comfort zone and tried something that. I would say like 85% of the MMA fighters wouldn't even do. And, uh, you know, she she would still go and do it more. It's just, uh, you know, there might be some bigger suitors out there. So, um, like I said, she'll be in here Monday and be ready to get ready for the next venture. So it, let's just say one of those big suitors is is Bellator. Because yeah. when she became a free agent, we, we all thought it was obvious. Yeah. Bellator's going to scoop her up. You guys are going to fight in the same promotion. And... It's just going to be a, a, a beautiful chapter to the romance novel story, between you yeah. between you guys. So, would you be able to fight on the same card with her? Like, is is that something you would want to do? Just because it's it would be a massive thing. It would be really cool for husband wife fight on a card, get wins on a card. Yeah. Even if you did it in January, like you became the champion. Like, what a story that would be. But at the same time, like if you're main eventing and she's fighting before, or vice versa, there's always the worry, the yeah. the concern. Is that something you'd want to do at some point in your in your career? Share a card with her? Yeah, for sure. And I think that's what uh, I. Uh, to be honest, I was angry when she signed with BKFC, and not just because I was like afraid of her to go do that, but I was like, "Fuck, we talked about <laughs> fighting on the same card and whatnot." And uh, I, I mean, whether I fought first or she fought first, it wouldn't really matter. Because to me, I'm so stone focused when it's time to fight. Uh, there's not really anything in the world that could really throw me off of, of that. I love fighting, and and I know what I got to go in there and do, and and all that. So uh, I think it'd be awesome, and I know that's a goal of ours in the future is fight on the same card. It would be so badass to be like main and co-main event for it, and uh, I'll take whatever spot because I'm going in to try to kill somebody. So uh, it doesn't really matter, but I'm. I'm hoping that that's what happens, but you never know. I mean, it's uh, it's a wild it's a wild sport. A lot of people are really focused on signing with the the top promotion or top promotions, but uh, we're seeing more and more suitors out there who are willing to pay some good money to to get people to come and fight and, and put eyes on their show. So you never really know. And we all like money, right? Fucking a, we love it. <laughs> <laughs> well. Hopefully you get the chance to make some more money with the Bellator title around your waist. Targeted for January, but Austin, I appreciate the time. Glad we got to do this, and uh, all the best to you in preparation for whenever that fight actually happens. Awesome, brother. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me, man.